Hey everybody, this is Brother Frank, and welcome to another episode of Remnant Call. I'm excited. Brother Benjamin is here with us tonight, and we're going to get started in a second. Uh, listen, if you didn't see here last week's program, I had to dig that one out of the archives. And the reason I dug it out of the archives is because it deals with technology addiction. And Brad Huddleston, who I had on here, actually lives about 45, 45 minutes away from me or so. Um, he is an expert and what he works with uh, the South African University and um, their neurological department on the effects of what this technology does to the brain. And folks, I'm telling you, this is one of the devil's greatest tools of numbing, numbing. We have become, as that old Pink Floyd song said, comfortably numb in the United States. And folks, we better wake up and realize what is going on. And so I'm going to bring in tonight, though, Brother Benjamin, are you here with me? Yeah, I'm here, Frank. All right, brother, I appreciate. We have, haven't have had you on in a few weeks, and uh, brother, there's a lot going on. I'm just going to ask if you could open up with a word of prayer on the show tonight. Yeah, amen. Father, we just consecrate this time to you. We look to you. Perilous times have come. The battle of the kingdom is on. Lord, we are in the midst of the final, really the final hours before everything in the world changes. Lord, I pray you would bring forth an utterance tonight through this program, and I pray you would bring an anointing upon this time and upon this message. Amen. Amen. Lord, that it would bring wisdom, direction, hope, and encouragement to the listening audience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, it's interesting for years we would pray, Lord, perilous times are coming. Now it's perilous times, folks. They're here. They're here. Yeah, they, they've come upon us. There's yeah. no question. Well, brother, a lot of things have changed, and I, I, I don't want to open up a rabbit trail, but um, interesting, the change in the – the uh, leadership of England's monarchy um, has changed. And uh, <laughs> that was a small event. Small event, yes. So, uh, brother, how, share with us what's been going on because a lot has changed in the last two weeks. Well, I think all of our listeners are probably aware that um, the British monarchy has changed. And Prince Charles of Wales is no longer a prince. He's now the king from Wales. And, you know, what a time in Queen Elizabeth. She, she died um, during or near the end of her 70th year reigning as the monarch over Britain and the United Kingdom. And what an interesting number, right, Frank? 70? Absolutely. Just keeps reappearing. As we march out these final days, I was talking with uh, John Haller, a friend of mine today, and I was saying, you know, John, the um, the 70th year of Babylon clearly is over. The judgment sequence is, is underway. You know, we're not talking about events that are, you know, in some distant future time period, which is the way we all approach Bible prophecy for many, many years. But we're now in the midst of these events coming to pass, and and it's it's coming in rapid succession. You know the drought. I was watching a video today. Um, Dana Wingington, who does um, the geoengineering watch, he had two videos that I thought were fascinating. One, Lake Shasta has turned into basically a mud puddle, and yet people are continuing to gather in their houseboats on what's left of this, what was once a magnificent lake. And it's, it's probably appropriately described as a mud puddle. You know, the drought across the Western United States is just unprecedented. It's a 1200 year drought at this point. And then he also brought forth a, uh, a scientist who had been studying the uh, rainwater and confirmed 
not only is the the rain contaminated with nano aluminum particles which are definitely part of the warfare against humanity it's they claim it's uh to fight global warming but it's actually part of the warfare against humanity is these nano aluminum particles cross the blood brain barrier and at the same time frank they also found evidence of graphene in the rainwater oh my microscopic razor blades so yeah that the um the unbelievable is happening right before our eyes brother yeah and uh, what i think is funny and and not, it's not funny but it is funny is you know in california the push for electric vehicles and and now everybody's got an electric vehicles out there and now they're telling them don't charge your electric vehicles because we don't have the power to charge it I mean, the madness of a fallen society that we live in is so in our face. It's outrageous. Yeah, the world has collectively gone insane. You know, and and everybody's under pressure. You know, this financial pressure is is hitting across the board. You you go to the grocery store, you know, you, you pick up a few items and it's a hundred dollars. What in the world has happened? The official inflation rates are are in the single digits. The real inflation rates are, are more than double digits. And, you know, and there's a stress in the atmosphere. You know, there's, I mean, the, if we had eyes to see and we could look into the heavens, we would see a war in the spirit that would just be incredible to watch. And we need to engage in that warfare because it is engaging with us, whether we like it or not. And, you know, the scripture tells us that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence shall take it by force. And, you know, a, a lot of Christians were trained, they were raised up in a church system where Christians were gentlemen and, and Christian women were ladies. And when we were polite and we didn't want to ruffle anyone's feathers and, and there certainly was no training in warfare. There was no training in the kind of violence that's necessary to overcome today. But for those of you that are walking in the spirit, I think you can probably testify to the hindrance that grows powerful. But yet as we gather in prayer in Jesus' name, as we begin to enter into his gates with thanksgiving, as we begin to enter the courts of the mighty one with praise, the blessed Holy Spirit begins to fall upon us from on high and we are strengthened. We are renewed. We are refreshed. And the wounds from the battle are healed and, and we're able to stand for yet another day. But, you know, this thing is getting serious. And not just in the spirit world, it's getting serious in the real world with the physical world. Recent reports, I don't know if these have been verified. This is coming from the Hal Turner website and, you know, they they pick up information, some of which is later found to be true. Other tidbits are, are found to have been propaganda. Uh, but this report is that in the recent military offensive that occurred in Ukraine, one out of three so soldiers that were killed were from NATO countries. And, you know, if, if that's correct, if NATO forces are in fact engaged in this war, then an active state of war has occurred between the Russian Federation and NATO. And, you know, it's only a matter of time. I think anybody with eyes to see can tell that, you know, this thing is escalating. I mean, in the last 24 hours, Armenia and Azerbaijan are at war. Iran is mobilizing. They're sending um, heavy armor to the border with those two countries. Turkey's mobilizing significant number of troops. And so war is breaking out on another flank of, of Russia's border. And you know, if that weren't enough, Frank, I don't know if you if you caught the news, but um, the media in Sweden has published a report represented to be from the Rand Corporation, which alleges that U.S. think tanks uh, created the strategy of sanctions and isolating Germany and Europe from Russian energy supplies in order to weaken 
Europe and strengthen the United States. And, you know, whether that's accurate or that's disinformation, that's being published in European newspapers. Germany is looking at an economic catastrophe, energy shortages, people will be choosing between heating and eating. And yet here in the West, they're shutting down food production. They're destroying so many processing plants. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. And meanwhile, you know, the the people that are chasing the cheese, and as long as the music's playing, the public is going to keep dancing. And the music played, in the case of the Titanic, until everybody got wet. And so, you know, the ice cold water was the wake up call that, No, the the ship really was sinking. Well, in our case, it's not going to be water. It's going to be fire. And Frank, did you catch the comments by, uh, I think his name is Medvedev. He was former president. He's now the head of the Russian Security Council. And a few days ago, he made the comment. Matter of fact, I'm going to, let me go find it. I I don't want to try to quote it. Um, No, and, and I might have heard that mentioned on a program while you're looking for it. It just, you know, Folks, just to mention, you know, we're no, the media is not even talking about the alliance between Russia, China, and now Iran and their oh, meeting there. Yeah, and it's like they're just ignoring something that's absolutely, in my opinion, critical mass. Um, well, exactly. Um, let me just let me find this for you. Um, unless it got pulled. Yeah, I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. Um, you know, while I look for this, Frank, the news also is reporting stories that European countries, Denmark is barring the vaccine, uh, citing you know large numbers of injuries and deaths. You know, the be- the nations are beginning to figure out that the vaccine was not a health measure. I mean, it's simply unbelievable. Um, okay, yeah, here I found it. Blunt warnings from Russia's foreign minister. Nuclear war is coming. And you know, he makes the comment. Um, let me just find the right statement here. Um, if the idiots in the West continue unrestrained supply of the Ukrainian reg- regime, with the most dangerous types of weapons. Sooner than later, a military campaign will move to another level. The visible borders and the predictable actions of the parties to the conflict will disappear. And he said that the countries in the West will not be able to sit around in their clean houses and apartments laughing at how they were able to carefully weaken Russia using someone else's hand. Rather, everything around them will catch on fire soon. They will be filled with grief to the fullness. They will literally have the earth burning and the concrete melting under their feet. He goes on and he says, we'll get a lot too. It'll be a very, very bad for everyone. And after all, it is written from these plagues, from fire, smoke, and brimstone coming out of the mouths of the prophets and out of the mouths of the beast, a third part of the population of the world died, Revelation 9.18. So Mevbedev is quoting the book of Revelation as he's basically threatening nuclear war against the West because of the actions that we're taking consciously, unilaterally. At the same time, Frank, the reports are that U.S. Weapons stockpiles, our munition stockpiles, everything that we're shipping to Ukraine now running dangerously low. We're going to be unable to defend our own country. And the reports on the ground in Ukraine are 70% of the munitions that arrive in country are immediately sold into the black market. Who knows what groups are acquiring these munitions? And the cash is going to Ukrainian and you know, perhaps other Western political leaders. So they're looting the United States of its means to defend itself. And at the same time, setting the stage for 
what will become World War III. You know, the only question in our minds is how quickly will it escalate? You know, could it move fast over the next 30 to 60 days? Possibly, yeah, it could. Might it take another entire year? Might we be enduring a, a frozen winter of food shortages and a and a coming summer of power disruptions and riots in the city and imposition of martial law and the beginning of the actual persecution of the church here in the now disunited states before the events of Ezekiel 38 transpire, before the Lord comes in visitation? And, you know, the answer is, yeah. We could very well be looking at another 12 to 13 months of the growing insanity and it's simply unbelievable, Frank. I mean, what what's your take on all this? I'm I'm still actually kind of dumbfounded uh, about Medvedev, you know, quoting Revelation nine eighteen. I, if that's not a flag, I mean, this guy just went absolutely biblical, like as in apocalyptic, straight out of. Re- I mean. I don't, that's, I'm still in kind of in shock. I didn't hear that all week. And sure enough, it's actually, I just was checking it out. It is legitimate quote. This is not some false propaganda. You, and when you have, I mean, this is, we better wake up and quit. I, I tell you, I have been, my biggest, one of my biggest concerns is how we keep touting how rain is, uh, excuse me, how Ukraine is just, you know, tearing up Russia. They're retreat cowards, you know what I mean? All this stuff. We're trying to like start a nuclear war with them. I mean, uh, it's the agenda of the new world order. Yeah. They have to burn the daughter of Babylon because they can't disarm her. And as a result, it would be impossible to occupy her. So they have to loot her, rob her, rob her, and then basically strip her naked, eat her flesh, and then burn her with fire. And this mm. is in Revelation 18. And we're we're really at the point where the country's been stripped. Our shame is visible in front of the whole world. I mean, it's it is outrageous what is occurring culturally inside our country perversion and wickedness are now considered good and the and righteousness and truth is counted as evil and the mm. people love it so and you know we are just to read a little bit of scripture in book of daniel in chapter 7 verse 19 daniel said and, and i wanted to know the truth about the fourth beast which was different from all of the others, but it was exceedingly dreadful. And its teeth were of iron, his nails of brass, and it devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue of the nations with its feet. And I wanted to know of the ten horns that were in its head and of the other horn that just came up to power. And soon before whom three of the ten horns will now fall, that will occur in World War III. I would assume those are the horns that rule over the daughter of Babylon. They'll be taken out in the midst of the war. And Daniel goes on and he says, And even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth to speak very great things, and its look was more stout than its fellows. And I beheld, and the same horn, this is the Antichrist, made war with the saints and prevailed against them. And that's what's happening right now. War against the saints has been declared. War in the heavens, war on the earth, war in the food supply, war in the chemicals being sprayed in the atmosphere, war in the in the militarization of the medical system, using engineered bioweapons and and bio I guess literally poisons. Inoculations used to destroy the immune systems of the people. Advertised and masquerading as medical therapies. I mean, the, you've got to give the the evil genius credit. It was a brilliantly designed plan to to corrupt the earth. And the, the beast, the Antichrist, 
who's really nothing more than a puppet in the hands of Lucifer, Satan, is making war with the saints and prevailing. The enemy is prevailing against us. And Daniel 7, verse 22, until the ancient of days comes. And then judgment will be given to the saints of the Most High. And the time will come that the saints possess the kingdom. Now, some translate that to, to the very end of the age. And others would say, well, wait a minute. The visitation of the Lord is the birth of the man-child. And when the anointing without measure comes upon the man-child company, and when Jesus comes among us as the Lion of Judah to fulfill the second half of his seven-year ministry, that is the visitation, the coming of the Ancient of Days. And in that window of time, judgment will be given unto the saints. And that is confirmed in Scripture in many, many parts. I'm just going to read one section of, of confirming prophecy from psalm 149 praise ye the lord sing unto the lord a new song okay well that's a little clue that this is the 144,000 who will be singing a new song that no man can learn and let praise rise in the congregation of the saints and for those of you that are in the midst of this war like the rest of us your warfare must include praise and worship these are some of the weapons of our arsenal amen you know, we've got to enter his courts with thanksgiving. We have to enter his gates with praise. Do not forget that most essential part because it settles our mind. You know, and if you're not running around in the mania that is our modern economy, and it's as if confusion has come over the businesses of the United States. I mean, it's just crazy. The confusion that is now occurring in the businesses all over our country. And they're just all chasing their tails. And if you're not getting swept up in that cloud of chaos, then, then the cloud, the canopy of darkness in the second heaven is no doubt weighing on you. We must wage war in spirit. We must wage war in, in prayer. And we have to enter the, the coming holy days with sanctification in our hearts. But we have got to do the, the work. But it also includes using the weapons of praise and worship. I mean, look, when you get into those periods of time where you just can't seem to break through, start singing your favorite worship songs. Raise your hands. Praise the Most High. For the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. And look, the beast... These satanic forces are going to prevail against us until the mighty one comes. But the scripture tells us the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. If we enter into a spirit of praise and worship, the mighty one will come and he will break the yoke through the anointing. And it's not through, you know, it's not through keeping up with the news. You could almost lose the news now. I mean, it's, I can tell you the way it's going to play. Whether it goes slow or fast, it's going to go downhill from here. But if we enter in in praise and worship, power of the king will come. And the scripture says in Isaiah, pardon me, in Psalm 149, verse 2, let Israel rejoice in him that made him. We must rejoice in the Lord. Look, there's nothing to rejoice in the world about now. Look, everything is turning upside down. Everything is a struggle. Every table full of vomit, darkness covering the land, deep darkness, the minds of the people, only a remnant being preserved. And they're in a battle for their lives right now. And you know, if you're not in a battle, if you don't know what I'm talking about in this fight, then either you're totally sanctified or you're, you're, you're out to lunch without a clue. And that answer is up to you. But the scripture tells us to rejoice in the Lord. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. And he will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. That's when you get up in the morning. The first thing we need to do when you wake up in the morning is enter into praise and worship. Even if you don't go straight to your prayer closet for prayer and for studying the word before you even get out of your bed, enter into praise and worship. Let the joy of the Lord be upon your lips. 
Sing aloud on your beds. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. Don't get out of bed without picking up the sword. Amen. And look at verse 7. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and to and punishment upon the people. Is that not the judgment? The saints at the in the last day, at the end of the age, unto the saints it shall be given the power to execute the vengeance of God upon the heathen and punishment upon the people to bind the kings with chains. And who are the kings of the nation? Bind their kings. Who are these kings? They are the ruling principalities and powers. And unto the saints, it will be given the authority to bind them with chains and the nobles with fetters of iron and to execute upon them the judgment written. The the little horn made war with the saints and will prevail against them until the ancient of days comes. And then judgment will be given to the saints to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all the saints. This is coming. The visitation of the Lord is either during or immediately following the great war. The fires will devour the, the cities of the beast and the Western nations. Everything that stands, the entire economic, political system of the world will collapse and the saints will rise in the power of an anointing without measure. Then judgment will be given unto the saints. See, the Antichrist and all of his little cockroaches, these, these people that are that are so perverted and so wicked and so vile that they... They, they actually love the evil and hate the good. These people that think they're going to rule forever, as soon as this war starts, the judgment of Almighty God is going to start. The sovereignty will be removed. Yes, the Antichrist will cast the final deception upon the nations. Yes, the false prophet will, will lead the people into despair and into desolation. But in the camp of the righteous, the light of truth will come upon you. The light shall shine. Amen. It says so in, I believe it's Isaiah 61. If I'm remembering my scriptures correctly. And I'm a bit exhausted from, no, it's actually Isaiah 60. A bit exhausted from too many travels and too many demands and too much warfare that I've faced as well. So bear with me, brothers and sisters. Isaiah 60, arise and shine. The saints are going to rise out of their beds, shining with the glory of the master. For the Lord is risen upon you. When we rise and the Lord rises upon us, no longer will the little horn make war upon the saints. No, the ancient of days will have come among the camp of the righteous and the enemy will flee in sheer terror. Darkness will still cover the earth and gross darkness will have captured the mind of the wicked. But the Lord shall arise upon the saints of the Most High and his glory will be seen upon them. The 144,000 will be glowing and those who pass through from death to life and who have become sanctified through this time. They too will have the light of God in their eyes. The glory of the Lord will be upon them. And the Gentiles, the people of the earth, shall come to the light of the children of God. And kings will see the brightness of their rising. And then the great second exodus will begin. So, you know, guys, we're kind of in, in many ways, the roughest hour for our side. We're in that final persecution where we are getting attacked relentlessly. And the enemy is prevailing on so many fronts. And, you know, I praise God that as we enter into praise and worship and as we exercise warfare and we take the authority in Jesus' name and we bind these satanic spirits that would come out against us and our family and we rebuke them and we cast them out of our homes, we rebuke them and we command them to get out of our lives, we yet have authority. But the war doesn't stop. The enemy regroups and they attack yet again another day. And this is going to continue because the little horn is making war with the saints. They already have captured the world. The people of the earth are under a, a, a satanic delusion that's known as um, 
I'm forgetting the name of the term, but it's a, a mass formation psychosis or a mass formation hypnosis has come. And the people that are under this delusion, there is no line of reasoning. There's no level of argument. There's no amount of truth that you can bring to bear that will bring them out from under their deceptions. You see them in public around you. And there are people still wearing the mask, even though the scientific evidence is, you know, has been overwhelming. It's incontrovertible and it's been confirmed a thousand times. The little virus you're afraid of is about the size of a peanut and the mask you're wearing is like a chain link fence or the, the virus is like the water droplets coming out of a garden hose and you're standing behind a garden fence trying to not get wet. You'll be soaked. And yet they wear the mask. They're still taking the vaccine. The weight of evidence, that the numbers that have died, the numbers that are disabled, the numbers you know, the, all of the people that are still getting sick again and again and again, these are the multiple vaccinated whose immune systems are degrading. And yet you can't tell anyone. People that have drank that Kool-Aid, that's their new religion. They're not going to leave the temple of man. They've chosen men as their covering. They've chosen men as their gods. They've chosen foolishly because the men they've chosen to follow have actually come to kill them. The, Satan has come to steal, to kill, and destroy everyone that follows the beast and follows the false prophet will be led into perdition and total destruction, but not so in the camp of the righteous. Mm, amen. Our day of victory is coming, brothers and sisters. The day of our visitation. You know, and, and look at in Habakkuk, the Lord says, let me just... Jump there real quick. I just want to remind you guys, you know, take in the whole counsel, the word of God. Um, if I can find Habakkuk. Thou did march through, let me back up. I'm in chapter three. Let's just read the whole thing in closing. Lord, I've heard thy speech and was afraid. Reminds me of the, the, the word I heard from heaven. This was maybe three years ago at this point, it was the word Paran, or maybe it was para. I couldn't really tell because I was asleep when this was spoken at about 130 decibels. I had literally thought a bomb went off in my bedroom. And I woke up trembling. I was afraid to look up the meaning of the word because it was spoken with such force. Paran! And, and I, I didn't, I was kind of afraid to know what it meant. You know, which really was the first time I was afraid to look up the meaning of a word that had been spoken from the throne of God. And, and, and this is exactly what Habakkuk said. Lord, I've heard your speech. I've heard your word. And I became afraid. I was afraid of the words out of the mighty one's mouth. Oh, Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. And that is what so many of us need. And we've grown tired and we've been worn down and, you know, and, it, and this warfare that's been against us has been perpetual. It's been unrelenting. So many are tired. So many are not losing faith, but in a place of discouragement. Yes, our hope in the Lord is still strong. We know in whom we've believed. We know his word is true. We know he's coming to rescue us. But right now, a lot of people are hurting and a lot of people are falling down and a lot of people feel as if they're being defeated and they don't see any way to change that circumstance in the short run. But here Habakkuk, he felt the same thing and he cried out, Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years and in the midst of the years, make known your truth in wrath. Remember mercy and God. It's coming from Taman and the Holy One. The Ancient of Days is coming from Mount Paran. You guys go back and study the message or study the word Paran. It's the place of separation. This is where God divides the true from the false. This is where he separates those that are truly born again from those who came in name only. Because only the true saints can hold up under the fire that is coming. All of the pretenders are going to go back to a place of compromise where, where life is seemingly easier. 
the saints of the most high, we will be refined by this fire until we are pure as gold. And then the mighty one will come from the place of division, from the place of the wilderness where the, where the crown is earned and his glory will cover the heavens and the earth will be full of his praise and the camps of his saints and his brightness is as the light. And he has horns of power coming out of his hand. And there was the hiding of his power. The Lord's in total control of every single detail that is occurring in your life, in my life, and in this planet. We need to do what Ezra did. We need to sanctify and prepare our hearts for the days of repentance that are immediately ahead of us. <clears throat> to prepare Amen. our hearts to be sanctified before the Lord. And God is hiding his power. He's about to reveal his power when he comes in visitation. Before him went the pestilence. That's the pandemic. That's the virus. And burning coals are going to be at his feet. When he comes in visitation, the nation will be burning. And he stood and he measured the earth. Behold, he drove asunder the nations. The Lord is about to rebuke the nations. And the everlasting mountains are going to be scattered. This speaks of spiritual powers. The mountains are the oros, that which is lifted up above the people. They're going to scatter. And the perpetual hills will bow. The powers and the principalities, they will all be on their face before the mighty one as he comes in visitation upon the earth. For his ways are everlasting. Hallelujah. Verse 10, the mountains saw him and they will tremble in fear. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep will even utter its voice and lift up his hands on high. The sun and the moon stand still in their habitation. Thy arrows went, and at thy shining, thy glittering spear, at the light of thy arrows they went. Pardon me for missing part of that verse. And at the shining of thy glittering spear, you did march through the land in indignation. You did thresh the heathen in anger when the Lord comes in visitation. When the Ancient of Days comes to walk through this land, even as he walked with Israel in the exodus out of Egypt, he will march through the land in indignation and he will thresh the heathen in anger. And at the same time, you went forth for the salvation of your people. He's coming for you. Amen. You're one of his saints. He's coming for you. He's coming for me. The Lord is going to come for the salvation of his people, even for the salvation of his anointed he wounds the head out of the house of the wicked, discovering the foundation unto the neck thereof, and he will strike them through. Hallelujah. Thou did walk through the sea with thy horses. He's going to walk through the sea, representing the nation, with, in, through the heap of great waters. And when I heard, my belly trembled, my lips quivered. Rottenness entered into my bones. I trembled in myself that I might find rest in the day of trouble. And brothers and sisters, the only place of rest in this day of trouble that is upon us is in that place of worship, in that place of prayer, in that place of meditation and studying the word of God. And you enter and you exit that holy place with the praises and the worship of the most high God. And there you can rest in the day of trouble when the enemies come to invade the land. And the fig tree will not blossom in this hour. The fruit will be withheld. The laborer will fail from the field. And the fields will yield no grain. The food supply is being destroyed. The flocks will be cut off. Yet the remnant shall rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet. He will make me to walk upon high places. And we will see and behold and embrace the salvation of our God and his redemption in the greatest hour of testing ever. Amen. It's upon us, brothers and sisters. Rosh Hashanah is the 27th, the final 10 days of all leading to Yom Kippur. We are in the month of Elal. This is the 40 days of repentance, the month of Elal and the 10 days of awe. Be sanctifying your time fasting and praying as much as you are able and, and please remember Frank please remember me in your prayers we are the tip of the spear to a small part of the remnant and believe me we catch more than our fair share of flack the warfare has been just 
simply unbelievable. Mm. But our, through the Lord, we overcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I, I think Rosh Hashanah is actually the 26th. Oh, okay. Um, the yeah, evening just, of the 26th? No, the evening of the 25th. So it oh, starts the 26th. You. Yeah. Um, folks, and that, I, you know, I, I've read through Habakkuk uh, plenty of times through the years, and I don't know what it was about that tonight, but that scripture has me in awe at the power contained in Habakkuk chapter three, folks. And bringing that knowledge that you just heard from the very word of God, knowing we're coming upon the days of all, the 10 days leading up to Yom Kippur, folks, let, let's just get real with God. Let's let's sanctify the time. Let, let's come to the Lord in repentance and worship and praise and 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 glorifying his name as we cry out to him. And not only for mercy, but actually with the belief that he is merciful that he is loving and kind and forgiving. Folks, your God has been sending every warning through these years of how much he loves you and cares for you and wants you prepared for the hour that is at hand. We are now in the times of the end. It's not something we're looking towards. It's not something somewhere in the future. We are in the times of the end. And brother, that was one powerful uh, chapter tonight in Habakkuk that read to me, it, 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 it sunk in very deeply, brother. And I thank you for sharing that. Well, we can thank the Lord for that message because Frank, Amen. Um, I've been so exhausted from everything going on and from just battles that you wouldn't even imagine. <laughs> Amen. Pray for my son, David, he is, the enemy has captured him. He's gone back out there. He is, He's scheduled to go to a Christian recovery program. He's got a bed, full scholarship. And uh, right now he's um, smoking fentanyl all mm. night long. Um, you know, and he knows the Lord. He he was powerfully saved as a little boy. And he's out there in, in the darkness. And so if you think of it, remember my son. David. Absolutely. Uh Yes, I'll take that personal with drug addiction. I know what it's like. I've been there. It's and, horrible. Uh, yes, it is. It's the devil. It's the devil's whip. And um, so, yes, folks, please pray and intercede. Remember David Lord, and remember our children, all of us, each other's children. Folks, this is this is war. And and we are on the Lord's side. And we, we are brothers and sisters in Jesus. And we keep each other in prayer. God bless each one of you on the remnant call, folks. I, I hope if the Lord would permit one day in his kingdom, we maybe we can have a remnant call reunion. Uh, I'm suggesting beside the tree of life would be a nice place to have it. But we'll let the Lord pick that if he so chooses us. But it doesn't matter. Once we're in the kingdom... All this madness will be over, and we got a little while longer. Just hold on. Your God has you saved. Brother, thank you. Thank Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the message tonight. I knew when you said you were tired that this could possibly be a powerful program because that seems like the way it always works with the Lord. Benjamin tells me that he doesn't feel like it. He's tired. I always say, you know what? Brother, I think this is going to be a good show. And I called it right beforehand because I knew he didn't have the strength. And God always seems to strengthen at the last moment. Thank you, brother. Thank yeah, you, the Lord, the Lord wants to bless us with words of encouragement. And, you know, but brothers and sisters, you know, the kingdom is suffering violence. We are under constant warfare. We need to step up our commitment to prayer, to fasting, and to using all of the arsenal at our disposal because we're at war the war you're seeing in the natural that is playing out in ukraine and now it's expanding into azerbaijan and and then it's going to engulf the whole world soon enough the same world war is occurring in the spirit be diligent set aside the time to pray and to take authority and don't absolutely don't forget enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise amen god bless you brother thank you for coming on folks keep your head up your god is coming for you soon it will be a little while longer but we shall hold fast as we see him coming in this clouds one day folks we are looking forward to that this world being over 
the Lord is still on the throne. This thing isn't over yet. We will be victorious in Jesus' name. God bless everybody. This is Brother Frank and Brother Benjamin on the Remnant Call saying good night and shalom. Trumpet in Zion, sounding on the mountains. Blow a trumpet in Zion, for the day of the Lord is come. Blow a trumpet in Zion, sounding on the mountains. Blow a trumpet in Zion.